We're continuing our, our series today on cover to cover, and we're walking through the scriptures, walking through each book of the Bible, and today we're going to be talking about Leviticus. Now, most people look at Leviticus and think, well, it's good bedtime reading, uh, a lot of detail in there, a lot of rules and regulations, and they may find it kind of boring. But we're going to find some stuff in here today that I think could be really life-changing for many people. And, uh, you know, we're all different. Everybody's different. We have different ways of looking life, at life. Some people are very black and white. They, they, they can delineate right from wrong and there's no compromise. Uh, they see life in black and white. Other people see life kind of gray and there's lots of overtones and, and lots of flexibility and lots of, you know, movement that they feel they can make. There are some people that love rules and there are some people that hate rules. Now, I want to read to you uh, kind of an amusing little, maybe on the lighter side, the rules for chocolate. There are actually rules for chocolate. Here, here they are. If you've got melted chocolate all over your hands, you're eating it too slowly. Chocolate covered uh, raisins and cherries and oranges and strawberries, and I'm gonna throw bananas in there too. They all count as fruit, so you can eat it, eat as much as you want. The problem, how do you get two pounds of chocolate home from the store in a hot car? You eat it in the parking lot. A nice box of chocolates can provide your total daily intake of calories in one place. It's just that handy. If you can't eat all your chocolate, it will keep in the freezer. But if you can't eat all your chocolate, the question is, what's wrong with you? What do we call equal amounts of dark chocolate and white chocolate? A balanced diet. Chocolate has many preservatives. Pre preservatives make you look young. Put eat chocolate at the top of your list of things to do today. That way, at least you know you get one thing done. The rules of chocolate. And so how do you like rules? What do you do with rules? Um, I want to read to you today from the text that I've chosen, and it's found in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44. Here's what it says. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I'm holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves about on the ground, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. Now, God knew that when he delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, that their tendency would be to just kind of run wild and, and do crazy stuff and forget God. And so God put in place a whole set of rules and regulations and guidelines to keep them on track and keep them worshiping God. And so that's what this whole book of Leviticus is about. Be holy, for I am holy. Now, what kind of images does that kind of bring to mind about being holy? I, I remember a number of years ago, uh, I, was, I was outside with, with our, our little boys, and, and uh, I don't know how old they were, four and six at the time, something like that. And I, I handed them rakes, and I said, okay, guys, I want you to... to help me rake the lawn. And um, they did everything with those rakes except rake the lawn. I mean, they were swinging them around and, and they were upside down and they just didn't have a clue. And I realized that I'm telling them to do something that they had no idea about what to do. And I had to help them by saying, look, I want you to watch me and learn how to do this. Watch and learn. And you know, we do that today all the time. Um, last night I, I got home from being out with my wife and, and I said, I, I've got to go and I got to watch something on YouTube. There's something I'm trying to figure out and I need to learn how to do it. And so I went and I found a video, a tutorial, and it kind of went through explicit detail on how to do this. So people do this for their makeup and how to cut hair and how to cook the perfect steak. and. Um, how to do home repairs or car repairs. People do it all the time. They watch and learn. They go to YouTube. 
And that is really what God is asking us to do is watch him and learn from him. And it's going to be a whole lot easier to, to, to be holy when we watch the Lord and we learn from him. So a lot of times what ends up happening is people say, okay, I've, I've got to be holy. I got to be holy. I got to be a good person. So, so they put in, in place all of these rules, almost like a new year's resolution. And, and they're destined to fail because of human nature, because the flesh wars against the spirit, because of temptation. And they're just, they're just, you know, they, they're determined. They, they think I'm going to, by sheer willpower, I'm going to be holy. I'm going to make some rules for myself. And we end up being really, really unhappy and unfulfilled in doing that. And a lot of times we just kind of fail and give up. And that's oftentimes a state that most people that would call themselves Christians are living in, in this state of, I kind of gave up on that whole concept of, you know, trying to, to be good or keep the rules because it wasn't working. Well, let's do a quick overview of Leviticus. We're going to get somewhere here today. Leviticus is uh, understood to have been written by Moses. There are about 50 references in the book of Leviticus that says, and the Lord spoke to Moses. So it's pretty good evidence that probably Moses had something to do with it. I think so. Charles Swindle said that Leviticus was the, the first book that uh, Jewish children study, and it's the last book that Christians study. And that's probably pretty accurate. The, the whole theme, the overall theme or message of the book of Leviticus is holiness and being holy and being sanctified and set apart for God. It's about receiving God's forgiveness and that's followed by living a holy life. And the whole idea of Leviticus is that, that Israel would be redeemed. They were rescued by God and that they were then going to be purified and kept pure and acceptable to God. It was about meeting God on God's terms and not them meeting him on their own terms. And so in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2, it says, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And it's just kind of woven through the book of Leviticus to be holy. And so I want to talk about secondly about following rules if that was the overview of Leviticus let's talk about the rules in Leviticus the the rules in Leviticus are really really explicit I mean I, I was reading before I, I got up to speak here about you know if a man has lost his hair and is bald he's clean if he's lost his hair from the front of his scalp and has a bald forehead he's clean I mean there's rules about being bald and then it goes on to say if he's got a sore on his head, well, then he's unclean and the priest has to declare him unclean. I mean, it's really explicit. And um, there are rules about sacrifices. There are rules about what you're allowed to eat and what you're not allowed to eat, what is unclean food and what is clean food. There are rules about relationships. There are rules about morality, our sexuality, um, even economic equality. Uh, there's everything is in there. It just seems like there's not much that hasn't been dealt with in fairly explicit detail. And so it's about being holy and holiness is being uh, separated from sin and separated to God, separated unto God. And holiness is about freedom from sin and walking in moral purity and integrity doing what God wants, doing what God wants you to do. There's a story about a pastor who, he got into trouble with his, his church board. And they had this particular rule that he just couldn't abide by. And uh, he had been talked to, approached by one or two board members at different times. And he said, yeah, I, I'm really having a hard time following that rule. I'm really having a hard time abiding by that. And he talk, was talked to by the chairman of the board. And he says, yeah, I'm really struggling with this. And finally, it, it kind of got to the point where they said, we have to have a meeting about this. So they had this board meeting, pastors there. And uh, the board 
discusses this with the pastor. They go back and forth, and finally the chairman of the board says, we need to vote on this. And so they hold a vote, and the vote is 10 uh, against 1. 10 against the pastor, and the pastor voted for himself. And so the vote was 10 to 1. The pastor stands up at the end of the table, and he says, look, you guys, I am the pastor. I'm the man of God here. And I don't agree with you, and I'm going to show you how wrong you are. And as he said that, there was a huge clap of thunder from the sky. It was so loud, it split the boardroom table in two. The board members went flying off their chairs, and the pastor stood at the end of where the table was, unfazed and untouched, unmoved. Chairman of the board gets up, and his hair's a mess, and picks up his chair, sits back down, straightens out his toupee, and uh, he says, okay, all right. He says, that makes the vote 10 to 2, uh, majority rules. And that's how we oftentimes deal with God's rules, is it's like, well, everybody's kind of going this way, so let's not worry about what God says. Let's not worry about what his rules are. And that's oftentimes uh, indicative of, of how we can end up behaving is, well, nobody else is doing it, and, and it, it seems to be passe, and I'm, not gonna, I'm just not going to worry about it. It doesn't seem to be an issue. So God established the sacrificial system, and I want to talk about that for a minute before we move forward. And it worked something like this. An Israelite would get an animal, and that animal was, was uh, going to be sacrificed. The Israelite would lay his hands on the animal, uh, thus transferring, symbolically transferring his sin from himself to the animal. The animal would then be sacrificed on an altar. And so, so, so it was kind of like symbolically that that animal paid the price for this individual's sin. This animal became ransom for that individual's sin. And it was really symbolic of sin and guilt being transferred. And then God would accept that sacrifice for that sin. And the person would be able to go free, forgiven. And that brings us to the New Testament. Jesus became our sacrifice for sin. And our guilt and our sin was transfer transferred to Jesus Christ. Then he went to the cross and he died for our sin. But the difference is there didn't need to be another sacrifice for sin made. It was once and for all. Jesus' sacrifice for your sin was final. It didn't have to be repeated. It didn't have to be gone over again. You don't have to keep trying to pay for your sin or trying to earn your forgiveness or trying to be good enough because Jesus' sacrifice was absolutely sufficient. He was the ransom for your sin and God received him as the final sacrifice for our sin. Now well, that's kind of, it's kind of cool when you think about it. So that's kind of the parallel between Leviticus and the New Testament and how things work today. Now, we also recognize that holiness is not really a, a real prevalent theme in the church today. And when I was a, a kid growing up in the church, it was kind of hammered in quite a bit. And um, it, you know, it really kind of mattered to us that, that we would be holy, that we would be pure. And, but it's not all of that, all that prevalent today. Um, and often we can, we can lazily, and I, I say this carefully, we can lazily substitute holiness for rules and, and say, well, if you're, if you're going to be holy, then these are the rules you're going to follow. It's kind of like this, you know, like, um, uh, here's a rule. This is holy, and, uh, and this is unholy. And that's how silly it can be. And so, uh, you know, people may have rules about makeup and skirt length and whatever else. Uh, it, it can be a little bit lazy. And, and, and that's why I think holiness gets a bad rap. That's why I think holiness oftentimes becomes really unpopular, because that's how people equate holiness. Now, there's a, another, another mistake we can make, and that's found in 2 Timothy 4.3, where it says, 
For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, they shall gather to themselves uh, teachers to tell them what their itching ears want to hear. And so that's the other end of the spectrum where, where you just get people to sort of affirm your, your sin and, and give you license to do whatever you want. Well, that's not where we want to be either. So holiness is a theme that is in Scripture that's woven through the Old Testament and woven through the New Testament. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 16, it says, Just as he who called you, that's Jesus, is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So there's that phrase again, taken all the way from Leviticus, and it's found in the New Testament in 1 Peter. Now that's a tall order. How do we do it? Well, I think it's best explained in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. Then he, Jesus, said, Here I am. I have come to do your will, the Father God's will. And he sets aside the first, that's the law and the sacrifices, the rules, to establish the second, which is the new covenant, Jesus dying for our sins. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Let me say that again. We have been made holy. We have been made holy through the sacrifice, through the death of Jesus Christ. That's the position that you and I hold as followers of Christ. We are holy because of what Jesus did. He obtained our holiness, and we obtain holiness not by what we do, whether our shirt's buttoned or unbuttoned, but our, our holiness is obtained by what Jesus did on the cross. And then Romans chapter 12, 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now remember, in the Old Testament, they offered uh, animals as sacrifices for the removal of sin. Well, now the New Testament is saying, offer your life as a, a living sacrifice. Be holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So in Leviticus, they offered sacrifices. In the New Testament, Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice. Today, we are holy not by sacrifices, not by keeping rules and laws, but we're holy because of what Jesus did for us. He made us holy. That's pretty neat. Through sacrifices, God redeemed his people. And through the sacrifice of Christ, God redeemed you. People offered animals to take their sin away. Jesus offered himself to take our sin away. They had to offer sacrifices over and over. Jesus was the final sacrifice. That was it. That's why he was able to say on the cross, it's finished. It's finished. When we trust Jesus, we are redeemed. We are set apart, and we are made holy when we trust Jesus as our Savior. That's good news. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, get it? Not by works. So that no one can boast, we can't be proud. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So let me close with this. What is our part? What do we do? We recognize that Jesus is the final sacrifice. We recognize that through him we're made holy. And our part is to, and I want you to get this, to be holy. Our part is to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's to obey the word of God. It's to listen to God. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to direct us. See, James says in chapter 1, verse 22, he says, don't just look at the word and forget what it says. He says, do what it says. Holiness does seem out of reach for most of us most of the time. Always doing the right thing is not always possible for everybody. So that the key for us as followers of Jesus is to give the Holy Spirit control of our lives, to submit ourselves to, to Christ, 
And as Paul talks about in Romans, to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, pleasing, acceptable to God. Your holiness comes through what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross and what the Holy Spirit can do through you as a living sacrifice. And we're going to, in closing today, we're going to celebrate communion. And I don't know if there's really anything else to be said other than we're celebrating the fact that Jesus died and he rose again. And through him, we've been made holy because of Jesus. We have relationship with God and we are forgiven and we get to have this beautiful relationship, this beautiful personal relationship. So I want you to take your communion cracker, uh, bread, whatever you're using at home. And we're going to partake together. Let's just bow in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Thank you that through Christ we're made holy. Thank you for the relationship that we get to enjoy, the access we get to have through, through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us, the access we have to God the Father. And so, Lord, bless these emblems as we partake together in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, at the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. And Jesus said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. He's talking about how he was shedding his blood on the cross of Calvary. And through that we have cleansing, we have forgiveness. Through the shedding of blood we have remission of sin, forgiveness of sin. Jesus shed his blood on the cross so that we can be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup. Thank you. God bless you. That was a great message from Pastor Jim. Always love to hear a, a message from a part of the Bible that we maybe don't usually preach from, that you don't hear a lot of sermons from, and, and how great and how awesome it is that every part of the Bible can lead us to Jesus Christ. Because that's really what we're here for, is to learn more about our Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for joining us. If you have anything that you would like to know from us, Anything that you would like to follow up on, you can find everything you need to know at our website, clcwinnipeg.ca. If you want to go back and listen to past messages, or um, if you'd like to make a donation, or if you would like to contact a pastor, or whatever it is, that's where you can find everything you need to know. Other than that, have a great week. Have a blessed week. Enjoy some spring weather, and uh, we'll see you back next week.